So we're leaving behind us the longest pier in the world, South End Pier, originally constructed in 1835, but initially it was only 180 metres long. Today, the pier is 1.34 miles long, and the reason for that is actually quite simple. South End, being a small town that it was, relied on passengers coming down from London, paddling down to the coast using paddle steamers that used to leave places like the Tower of London, and Westminster Pier. As these paddle steamers, carrying thousands of tourists, would pass by South End, they would drop on this small pier to allow people to go ashore and have, uh, bathe in the waters, perhaps spending a few days or a week here for their summer holidays. But the pier being only 180 metres long, could only be accessed at high water. Other than that, the paddle steamers would just steam on by, making their way down to other towns like Hearn Bay, Margate, Clacton, the River Blackwater. It was only when the council decided that uh, they wanted to cash in on the thousands of tourists that couldn't reach them because they were just steaming straight on by at the low tide. They extended the pier time and time again until eventually they reached that low water mark. To our left-hand side, whilst I know it looks like there's a load of water there, but we're actually following the low water mark. At tide, at the low water, uh, all to our left hand side is mud banks and uh, shallow water. And this will continue following it all the way down to the Shrewsbury Phoenix unit ahead of us, by nearly a mile. So the, the, the sands expose themselves at low tide, making it completely inaccessible for the paddle steamers. Once the pier had reached 1.34 miles long, the paddle steamers could stop not only at any tide, but they could get here in pretty much any weather as well. And that meant that South End started to flourish. In 1880, South End Station was then opened. The iron rails reaching out from, South, uh, from London uh, made it far quicker and cheaper to travel by train than it was by boat. This resulted in a start sharp decline in passenger numbers aboard the paddle steamers and eventually one by one they all closed down. The iron rails eventually stretched out to Margate on the Kent shore and then this became almost untenable for the paddle steamers. Summer cruising remained popular but uh, there remained up until 1967 a north-south crossing between South End Pier and the River Medway which can be seen on our right hand side now. The three chimneys to our right you'll see is the LNG power station situated on the Isle of Grey. And the wind turbines are situated on the Isle of Sheppey. Between the two, there is a small break in the land and that is the entrance of the River Medway that flows in towards Chatham and Rochester. Up at Chatham, we have had the principal base of the Royal Navy ever since AD 1547. Queen of Elizabeth I established Chatham as the Royal Naval Base where man of wars would have lined the banks either under construction or awaiting repairs. In 1588, that fleet was put to its greatest test, setting sail from Chatham, sailing out through the entrance of the Medway into the Thames, around the east coast, down towards the English Channel to be, def uh, to, uh, to be uh, deployed against the Spanish Armada.